Hi, my name is Rabbi Mendel Brogna. I'm a senior mashkiach for the COR, and I'm about to lead you through a tour of my typical day. Another responsibility that I have on a daily basis is ensuring that all new vessels, all new kalim, go to the mikvah. And we're here at the Agudah Mikvah. And it has to be completely submerged at one time. All this stuff came from north of Rutherford. So I had to drive up there, pick up all the stuff. This is the most convenient mikvah in the city to use. The whole thing can take about an hour. It doesn't happen so often that people are purchasing only if they have a new establishment or they, for some reason they had to get some new stuff. Given day, depending, my goal is really set to go to three or four caterers a day. And then we have something called community service, which means they call, people call up to see you are and say, we need our kitchen kosherized because we just moved in. And we have a free service for the community and I usually do the koshering. And we go to their houses and that could take a half a day sometimes. Just before I came over here, I was at the Beth, Beth Jacob High School and helping them out with something over there. So we're gonna be going into Beth Emmeth now to do an inspection. We have a mashkiach checklist over here, and one of the responsibilities of the mashkiach is to make sure that the establishment is secure, meaning if there's no one there, it should be locked. And that's why we're doing a surprise visit today. There's no employees here today, it's gonna be very quiet, so we can do a proper inspection, check inventory, and we can also check the security, make sure everything is locked properly. So we're just going into the kitchen and make sure that the doors are locked and this is locked. If you don't keep it locked, it's a problem because there's so many employees here, someone could just go in and start making something. For example, they can make like a cheese omelet on a, in a frying pan. It's a, it's a meat kitchen, so you have to be very careful. Okay. So we see it's all secure. Now we're gonna go in through the outside of the building because that's the only way we can get in. One of the responsibilities of a Siwa Mashkiach is to ensure that his place meets the standards of Bishri Yisrael. So he has to light all the pilot lights on all the ovens and stoves. It's very important to have Jewish involvement in the cooking. We have one working and one not working. So that's why you always have a lighter, handy lighter. And it could be many reasons why a pilot could go off. There could be a liquid that's overflowing, like a soup that overflowed, or... or no, this pilot's working. You see, it was just off. Yeah. Whenever we have a meeting at the COR, we always bring up about safety issues. Non-slip shoes, uh, proper goggles, and things like that. The stove is not working well. I like coming when no one's around, because if everybody's working here, you can't catch something like this. It's very, it's impossible. And we're gonna have this fixed by before Shabbos. So, so far we, we worked on two things in the checklist. We did establishment control, which was excellent. Every door was completely locked and secure. So I know this is the Beth Emmett checklist. Stove tops have to be fixed. Every fridge and freeze, even the ones downstairs, are locked. And the reason is, because once the party's over and all the food gets locked up, we will allow the caterer and the staff to clean up unsupervised, and then they can leave through the door, which is a self-locking door. And that's, it's cost effective for them, and there's no issues because all the food's already put away. Because there's no reason to have a mashkiach come to a place and stand around do nothing for five hours when they're just cleaning dishes. And that's why we put locks in the doors to save them five hours of labor costs. We always try to accommodate the proprietors to, to, to make it easier for them. So even though this, can, this synagogue is a conservative synagogue, I have friends out of Orthodox who would come here for a simcha and they would feel very comfortable eating here because they know it's a standard level for all places, whether it's conservative, reform, Orthodox. We always keep one standard for everybody and then everybody in the community feels comfortable. In this one shelf, there are so many different hekshayrim from across the world. We have a product from France. We have a product from Korea. We have a product from New York, from Toronto. The mishkiach has to really be aware of which hekshayrim, which kosher symbols that, that we allow, because we do not allow all kosher symbols. This is good, this is good. Well, there, there's approximately 190 places in the food service division of the COR. And my personal responsibility is on all 190. We have a mishkiach, or a shomer Shabbos person, or a working mishkiach, or a root mishkiach, in every one of those places. See, that's the COR calling right now.
Tell call me now, yeah. Bye. Hello? What was the first question? What was the first one? Oh, Belgian Hell for sure does. Impossible for me to answer that question without seeing it. Now, we do once in a while get something called a leaf miner, which, which lives inside the leaf. Cut the tip off on the bottom by the stem. Separate all the leaves. Okay. Wash them in water with a little bit of soap. Rinse them off. And then you have to check a few of the leaves. Make a chazaka check. Call the COR. They have a there's, a... there's a COR vegetable guide, which we give out. And you're more than welcome to call up and get one. And it shows which insects are for which vegetables are more prevalent and the exact washing procedure for each type of vegetable. Uh, and where would I get it? You call the COR back and ask, uh, ask Secretary to send you one and we'll gladly send you one. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. So I have no idea who that person was who just called me and these are the type of calls we get all day long from the community. Always change the number now so we don't forget. All the prep is done over here. You'll see it's a very large room. It's like a factory, this kitchen, because it's such mass production with vegetables and meat. We're here at Dr. Laffer. We're in the kitchen. And just to give you a little overview about the Mishkiach's responsibility, we created a Mishkiach checklist, which has approximately 20 to 30 different items that a mashkiach has to check every time he comes to an establishment. We uh, check herbs for infestation of insects. We also relight the pilots once a week. Even if they're always working, we always relight it just to be safe. The main responsibility is that when you come into a place, we have the mashkiach sign every single item in the place. So this is a head of cilantro, coriander, and Herbs have an issue of insects. You know, insects are not kosher. The most prevalent type of insects we're gonna find in this type of herb will, would be aphids, thrips, spider mites. So we're just gonna cut it like this. That part's garbage. We're gonna stick it in the container, loosen it, we're gonna put it on the cold water. And we're gonna add some soap, just a little bit. We're gonna swish it around. Empty some water. Every mishkiach is doing the same procedure throughout all the restaurants. This is the most time-consuming aspect of a mishkiach's job and one of the most important. People that say they keep semi-kosher, they'll just eat a salad in a restaurant, it's making a very big mistake because a salad in a restaurant could be full of insects and every insect could be so many, uh, so many of errors with each insect. Eating a salad might be very, very dangerous if you don't wash it properly. So it's rinsed off extremely well. You'll see how many times we're gonna rinse it just because of a little bit of soap. I'm taking this out. And then we stick this on the light box and you will be able to see it. We're gonna look for infestation. Yeah, if you come over here and look over here, this one I'm pointing to, that's a little aphid. Aphids are usually green and round. I don't see any thrips in here. Aphids are really more dangerous than thrips because aphids have a very good adhesion to the, to the vegetable. Thrips come up very easily. Now, aphids and thrips live in colonies, so if you find one, there's usually many. So this is the very touchy topic. You find one aphid. We washed it once. So what's the procedure? We're gonna wash this again. In a place like this, they may be doing 200 heads a day. So you always have to put in perspective of how many hours a day it's gonna take to actually do this properly to make sure it's bug-free. 
We don't want any of our customers eating at the CUR eating any insects. Eating an insect is like eating not kosher meat. It has the same status. There's no difference between eating an insect and eating meat that's not kosher. Every single vegetable gets done like this by the mashkiach. The, the point is that it takes hours to do this properly. It's not something you can just do in one minute. A mashkiach will literally be checking things for five, six, seven hours a day. And that will be his main responsibility here. So when he's standing here, he's not just doing nothing, he's actually checking and washing and helping out. When I woke up at five o'clock in the morning today, I always check my phone first thing after I say Modani. I say Modani, and then I check my phone. And, and I see a mashkiach in the middle of the night said he's sick, he can't show up. And we needed someone today at seven o'clock in the morning to open up a place. So at five o'clock in the morning, I'm already texting Rabbi Haber saying, what are we gonna do? Now Rabbi Haber's in a different city. Thank God we were able to find someone to go seven o'clock to open up the other place. So it's always a little bit of a stress when you have that last minute issue like that. Issues that we had, I was supervising at a hotel in Niagara Falls one year, and they have a dairy kitchen and a meat kitchen. And my motto was, no milk in the kitchen. And I'm saying that all day long and the workers had no idea even what kosher was and they think the rabbi's crazy. Why is he saying no milk in the kitchen? And then like two days into the event, I see a lady making a salami and cheese platter. One slice salami, one slice cheese, one slice salami, one slice cheese. I said, what are you doing? She says, I said, didn't I tell you no milk in the kitchen? She says, Rabbi, this ain't milk, this is cheese. You know, someone that doesn't know kosher, it's, it's very difficult. What can you expect from someone that never had kosher before? And here we are arriving at Toronto Kosher. They know about kosher. Our main purpose today, they just have a, I think they just got a meat delivery in from the, from the main shkita. And we are going to be checking some of the knicker, which means make sure the veins are taken out properly and the forbidden fats are removed. And that happens to be one of my expertise. I am a shaykhit and I am a menakia, which means I take out the veins. We're about to go now into the prepared food room where they actually prepare foods. And we're about to go in now. This room is not kosher for Passover yet. This is the main ro rotating oven stove. Every day, the mashkiach has to put this on. Hello, hello. As you can see, they're preparing for the mashkiach to wash some cabbage. And that's why they're shredding it first, because you always shred it before we wash it. It was already, it was already checked the outer leaves. And he's upstairs in mashkiach, and he'll be down here shortly to finish up the process. Hygiene standards are very important. A mashkiach needs to wash his hands before and after handling foods especially when dealing with raw meats and chickens. This is a rib over here, if you can see. This is bone number 12, and we always do 12, 10, 11, and 12 to take, to take out the veins over here. This is a veal. There's a few places you have to check in to check in here for the vein out. Everything on this side is forbidden. The fat's off, this is good. The vein's off over here. On, on the veal, there's only 11 bones, so that's why we only did two. We did 10 and 11. We always take 10, 11, and 12. There's only 11 bones, that's why we have only two doing the veins out. And they took this off. This is beautiful. Every fridge here and freezer has a lock on it, as in every other establishment. This room right now is kosher for Passover. These are all different prepared foods that they already prepared, as you see. We're very particular not to have meat and fish cross contaminated, so you see this, this is basically gonna be a vegetable and fish rack. The meat one's in the other in the other fridge. We are heading towards Tovli. It's one of our pizza stores here in Toronto. They are expecting me because they asked me to inspect a few things. Another thing we came today for is to inspect a sample which they left over me to ensure that it was pureed enough. So this is excellent. And another one of my responsibilities is the bimafresh chala, which means anytime there's a new dough made, we have to separate a portion. And today we burn it. In the olden days, we used to give it to a Kohen or the high priest. So they made two doughs here today, and that's why they left over two pieces for us. And then we are going to be mafresh from the person who made the dough. So 
So the procedure is following, just to describe it first. We're gonna hold it in our right hand and have another one in mind. We're gonna make a blessing, and then we're gonna say three words to be karashen, which means we're gonna designate it. Baruch ato Adonai lehinu melech elam asher kedishanu b'mitzvoisa b'tzibonu l'hafish chala min ha'isa. Harizeh chala. Now it's a Passover kosherizing question. We always have to have everything sealed. If it's meat, chicken, or fish, it has to have two seals. And if it's all other products, we only need one seal. That is a typical day for a siwa mashkiach. From koshering, to taking things to the mikvah, to checking vegetables, to making sure everything is secure, going to butcher stores, to answering community questions. And I just want to thank you very much for joining us.